so we're here in the Dolby booth here at Mobile World Congress, and you're talking about JPEG HDR. Why do you talk about that? So JPEG HDR bridges the gap between what your eye can see, which is over five orders of magnitude of dynamic range, being the difference between the brightest array I've ever seen and the darkest array I've ever seen. So the difference between what your eye can see and what your smartphone or camera can capture. So let me show you very quickly what that looks like. And if I aim my smartphone at this scene, you can see that I have to choose whether or not I want to see all the details in the white, bright part area of the scene or in the dark part of the scene. What Dolby HDR allows you to do is to capture the full dynamic range of that scene by doing what's called exposure bracketing and then process that image in a way that preserves the full dynamic range so that it can be manipulated, tone mapped, and later displayed in its full original dynamic range. <clears throat> So what do you do to do that? So the first step we do is when you reduce, when the picture was taken, because of the, the exposure bracketing, I was able to capture the full 20 bits or so of a, the original dynamic range of the scene. I then compressed that dynamic range for backwards compatibility purposes, but I also preserved in the header of the file the metadata that will allow me to later reconstruct the full dynamic range. Nice. So th is this the new standard JPEG HDR? So JPEG HDR is a, a Dolby format that is based on JPEG and uh, Dolby has implemented an extension, the HDR extension if you will, and by using the app marker 11 in the JPEG header and we store the uh, high dynamic range metadata in that app marker 11 header. And let me show you a little bit what it looks like. Does that mean the, the image can be displayed by any machine that can display JPEG and it will never fail, right? That's right. So let me show you what it looks like on this tablet. I'll use the standard gallery viewer um, yeah. on this tablet. And what you have here are a number of um, uh, HDR images yeah. that uh, we've selected. You, you'll recognize this one from the scene. And this is an 8-bit tone map image that every viewer on the planet uh, can see. Uh, you can upload this to Facebook, to Flickr, you can send it to your friends and they will be able to see that picture. So what happened between taking the picture and coming here? Did you do some processing somewhere? So one of the advantages of the JPEG HDR format is that because we preserve the full dynamic range of the original picture, um, you're able to do tone mapping after the picture has left the camera or the smartphone. So when the picture was taken here, we did a quick uh, tone mapping to save uh, battery life. When the picture went to the cloud, we were able to use the computing power of the cloud to do a much better uh, tone mapping which gives you a more pleasing picture for standard JPEG viewers. And that's automatic? And that happens automatically, yes. Based on what settings? Like uh, average? What do you, how do you choose which uh, go up and down and stuff? Uh, this is part of the secret sauce of tone mappers. And different people will always claim that they have better tone mappers than others. Uh, but it happens automatically. If you are a developer, you can tweak knobs to get different uh, tone mapping algorithms implemented. And it's still part of some of the differentiation from one to the next. Does the phone have to take three pictures manually? Can't you just like take one somehow and have it be so raw? The, 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 the phone doesn't take three pictures manually. You only press the shutter once, yeah. and the pictures are taken automatically. As sensors improve, uh, sensors may, today most sensors are 10 to 12 bits, and in the future you can expect sensors to become even more capable of capturing the dynamic range. So perhaps in the, in the future you'll have 20 bit sensors. But even with, with exposure bracketing, um, you can have now uh, 
chips that can uh, do what's called burst mode and they can capture multiple exposures very, very quickly. That makes it almost indistinguishable from a single exposure. Uh, people like Qualcomm, uh, with whom we're working, <coughs> uh, have, have such uh, chips. <coughs> so it feels like taking one picture, but it's actually taking three. <laughs> three, and, and there is no magic about three. It could be five, it could be more. Uh, some of the images that we have here actually um, were taken with, with uh, more than three. Uh, three is uh, the current best compromise between um, speed and, and quality. But let me show you a picture that, has, that was taken with even more uh, brackets, more exposures. So this is what the picture would look like if you had taken a single exposure in that church. This is what the picture looks like after we were able to take three exposures and apply some pretty good tone mapping. And you can see that the amount of detail, particularly in the stained glass and in the roof, has improved dramatically. All right. Now, this is the picture that you would see in any viewer However, if you use a JPEG HDR capable viewer, you can take full advantage of the dynamic range of this display. Most displays today are also limited in their dynamic range. This tablet probably has eight, maybe 10 bit uh, of dynamic range capabilities. So as I zoom into a particular where we have the scene, I can make sure that the 10 bits of dynamic range that this device is capable of can be applied specifically to the area I'm interested in and reveal even more details than were originally viewable in the two mapped image. This was, this was not taken with a smartphone, was it? No, this was taken with the uh, regular camera. Not, not with a smartphone because as I said it had... DSLR. Yeah, it had like 13 or so exposures. But this is... The reason I wanted to show you this picture yep. is to show you that it's not limited to smartphone applications. The file format, JPEG HDR, allows you to capture and store as much as many as 26 bits worth of dynamic range, which is all you'll ever need for, for most, if not all, consumer applications. So no need for RAW? No need for RAW. And, and is it a competitor to RAW format? What is it? It's not really a competitor to RAW format because the ecosystem today is JPEG. You cannot send a RAW file to your friends. You cannot upload a RAW file to Facebook or Flickr or Shutterfly. Another big advantage of our format is this, the file size is only 20 to 30% larger than an original JPEG file. Um, and the reason for that is because we're able to compress the metadata to, to uh, form the full dynamic range to such an extent that, as I said, depending on the dynamic range of the scenes, your file, instead of being three or four megabytes, may be 20 to 30% larger, and no other file format does that. Uh, not RAW, which is tens of megabytes, not Radiance HDR or OpenEXR, which are also very good formats, but are very large not backwards compatible with JPEG. So this is uh, what Dolby has done, is a format? Or is it a chip, or is it uh, an application, or, or is it's, it everything? It's, it's the, uh, so today what we are offering to uh, device makers is a set of libraries, both for uh, software libraries as well as uh, RTL that can be embedded in a chip. And alongside, you get a demo app. Demo app. What, but what we sell is uh, intellectual property, it's technology licensing. We, we sell to people how to do this. So every time somebody will use a, a JPEG HDR, there, there will be license involved? Certainly on the encoding side. Uh, right now the, the, the model that we are uh, promoting is uh, the viewer is, is available to all, so you can view JPEG HDR okay. images as freely as you want. Uh, but capture devices and re-encoding, image processing, uh, anything that requires the encoder will have to pay Adobe a license. How about the idea of uh, only sending the JPEG and ke keeping the HDR information on the cloud and only streaming it if the user needs to view it? So, uh, totally possible. We think that uh, some online providers may want to do that and th this is not something that Adobe 
uh, promotes one way or the other. It's possible, like without inventing something completely different. No, it's possible. Now you could you could send a tone map. To, you could strip the header. Yeah. Before sending the file, you can strip the metadata for the app mark from the app marker 11, and just send the uh, the tone map image. And then download the header later, if you want it. If the user needs it, right? Or what's it called? And so you, you could imagine um, a service, if you will, where for free, what you get is the tone mapped image, the 8-bit image. But maybe for a fee, you could retrieve the full HDR image. Right.